Once again, I met a lady named Bell and learned about a gentleman named Archie McLaughlin. This taking place in Deadwood, Dakota Territory. Frontier Gentlemen. Here with an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. In just a moment, we will bring you this latest report from the Frontier Gentlemen. Throughout the week on CBS Radio, Walter Cronkite and Bill Downs report the business news. They bring you up-to-the-minute information on price trends, employment, marketing situations, and the stock market. It's information that can help consumers save money, can help businessmen make money. Join us on CBS Radio regularly as most of the stations bring you the business news reported by Walter Cronkite or Bill Downs. Now, starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. The tent had been set up on Main Street in the heart of what is known as Deadwood's Badlands District. The last time I had seen it was two months earlier in Cheyenne. It was a gambling establishment belonging to a rather extraordinary woman who called herself Madame Verdi. To be exact, Lurleen Monte Verdi. Owing to the fact that during the war she had been a Confederate spy, she no longer used her real name, which I knew to be Belle Siddons. It was mid-morning. A comparatively quiet hour in Deadwood as I strolled toward the tent. Off to one side, I saw the wagon that had been converted into a type of omnibus and which served as Miss Siddons' living quarters, complete with lace curtains and satin cushions. At that moment, the wagon door opened and she stepped down. Mr. Kendall! Well... Mr. Kendall, uh, how nice to see well, you Well, I'm again. delighted to see you, Madame Verdi. Well, I was thinking of changing to Vestal, but it's still Verdi, Mr. Ah. Kendall. Unless we're alone, then I think I'd rather you call me Belle. Yes, thank you. When did you arrive in Deadwood? Last night. The tent has only just gone up. And I hope you have better luck than you had in Cheyenne. Where there's gold fever, there's more than enough business for all. I don't think the gentlemen of Deadwood will object to my presence. <laughs> when will you open? Tonight. But what about you? Really, I've never expected to see you again. What have you been doing? Oh, not much. Writing my articles, sending them to London, hoping they'll be printed. I should have thought you'd have joined the gold hunt in the Black Hills. <laughs> no, no, I'm afraid i have never make a successful prospector. Oh, what a strange man you are. Will you come with me to the tent? Yes, of course. I want to make sure the tables are ready for tonight. Then perhaps you'll take me to breakfast. I wish you'd have some. It's very good. Mm, thank you, no. I had breakfast two hours ago. Hmm? Is that a reproach? <laughs> Not at all. I hate to get up early. I always have. Uh, as a matter of habit, it doesn't make much difference. Do you know that you've been staring at me? Hmm? Is there egg on my chin? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Forgive me. It's only that i would forgotten how attractive you are. One doesn't very often see an attractive woman in these parts. Well, I'm not sure whether to be flattered or not. You have a charming smile. It reminds me of the Mona Lisa, a little obscure. One can never be sure of why she's smiling. She's probably holding a pat hand. <laughs> you enjoy gambling, don't you? I don't think I ever looked at it that way. Enjoyment. I gamble because it's the most convenient way to make a good living. Oh, I think there's more to it. Curiosity isn't healthy in the West. Haven't you learned that yet, Mr. Kendall? Well, I'm a newspaper correspondent. Is that why you're interested in me? Oh, you are a lovely woman who says one thing with her lips and something 
altogether different with her eyes. Now, that intrigues me. Mm -hmm. All women do that. No, they don't. Not in Dakota territory. <laughs> They're a little more obvious. <laughs> you know, in some ways, you're like my husband. You at Hallett. I think I told you about him. Yes, yes, you did. He was a very direct man. I think he would have liked you. Uh, don't turn around. There's a gentleman wearing a badge coming over to the table. Huh? Morning. Good morning. Name is Boone May. I'm a peace officer here in Deadwood. I take it you're Madam Bertie, ma'am. That's right. Mind if I sit down a minute? Not at all. Thank you. You're that newspaper man, uh, Kendall, ain't you? Yes. Hey, you was pointed out that's how I knew, Savvy. Well, ma'am, I seen the posters your boy's been putting up around town, went over to your establishment. They said where I'd find you. It isn't against the law, is it? I mean, putting up posters? Oh, shucks, no, ma'am. I, I just figured I wanted to get acquainted, is all. Well, it's very friendly. Don't you think so, Madam Verdi? Very. Well, now, I'm a real friendly fella, madam. Always like to know who's new to Deadwood. Uh, of course, seeing you and all, I'm kind of surprised that a lady sets up business in the Badlands. That's the roughest territory in town. You know that? I'm not a lady, Mr. May. I'm a gambler. I was told that my situation is the best corner on Main Street. That's why I took it. I'm paying a very high rent. I hope that I haven't been misled. Well, now, ma'am, if it's business you want and you don't care who gives it to you, you'll do fine. I thought you ought to know, though, that uh, there's some pretty mean boys will be visiting you. That's where they go, to the Badlands. Then I hope they'll become patrons. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I reckon I'll be coming around tonight, kind of see everything gets off to a good start. I shall look forward to seeing you, Mr. May. Yeah. Well, that's good, because I got a feeling uh, you being a woman and all, well, you might need some protection. Now, if I can help, you just give a holly here. I'll be there. You're very kind. So long, ma'am. Mr. Kendall. Mr. May. Now, I wonder why. Why? What did he really want? Didn't you hear? I'm a woman. He wants to protect me. You don't believe that? No. Do you think he knows about you being Bell Siddons? Possibly somebody from Cheyenne has brought word? It's possible, but I don't think so. <laughs> I hope not. I want to stay open for a few nights before they throw me out of Deadwood. If you don't mind, I'd rather like to come tonight. It'll be worth seeing how Deadwood reacts to Madame Verdi. With all the important decisions which face the nation these days, it's a good thing to become as familiar as possible with the men in industry and government who influence the policies which shape our lives. Every Sunday, CBS Radio calls on these leaders to face the nation, and veteran CBS News reporters call on them to answer questions and frankly discuss the issues of today. Democracy depends for its life on your keeping well informed. To be well informed and to keep that way, Listen every Sunday to Face the Nation on most of these same stations. Deadwood's reception of Madame Verdi will long be remembered. She stood on a board and was carried through the entire town on the shoulders of four strapping miners. It was a precarious balance, yet she contrived to appear quite regal and an extraordinary woman. The tent was open for business and immediately became filled to overflowing. Belle took her seat at the 21 table and was besieged by a crowd of men willing, anxious to lose their fortunes to the gently smiling dealer. I was standing at the bar drinking a beer when I felt a tap on my shoulder. It was Boone May. Hey, uh, come on out a minute. I want a word with you. All right. Oh, 
pitch down in. Some crowd, huh? <laughs> hey, Mr. Kendall, are uh, you a good friend of the madam? I knew her in Cheyenne. I'd say we're fairly good friends. You want to do her a favor? It depends. And tell her to play it straight. She can stay in Deadwood. I'm not sure I understand. Well, now I'll tell you. You see, me and my boys, our job is to watch out for the gold shipments. Now, you take some of them stage drivers and shotgun boys guarding the gold, they get a drink too many in them, and, well, they like to maybe talk some too much. Savvy? No. Well, like maybe when a gold shipment's due to pull out of Deadwood. Well. Suppose that talk gets in the madam's pretty ear. Suppose she passes it along to somebody. Suppose somebody holds up a stagecoach carrying a box full of gold, Sammy. Well, I think so. There's fellas in that tent right now, a dozen or better. Bad medicine. I seen him watching us figuring the odds. Johnny Bull Collins, Laughing Sam, C.C. Clifton, Archie McLaughlin. They'd make it worth her while to talk turkey at the right time. Maybe a split on the tape. Oh, now I see what you mean. And you want me to tell her not to do business with these chaps? That's what I mean. Couldn't you have told her the same thing? I could. I reckon coming from you would mean a sight more. But why? Oh, mister. Well, I've seen the way she looks at you. And when a female gets soft in the eye, she'll listen to one man more than another. She'll listen to you. The way she looks? <laughs> no, my friend. I'm afraid you're mistaken. Say, I'm willing to make a proposition. Mm -hmm. You tell her, see. Any of that wild bunch try to deal her in on a holdup. If she gets the word to me first, I'll see she ain't forgotten. That company's setting out the gold to take care of her. Savvy? I savvy, but I'm not your man. How come? I don't know her the way you think I do. <laughs> You're quite wrong about her feelings for me. Mm -hmm. Mister, mm. you couldn't teach a setting hand to cluck. Very possible. But if you have business to discuss with her, I suggest that you do it yourself. I left the peace officer, Boone May, and went back to my hotel. My next two weeks were taken up with the story of a fabulous gold strike located a few miles from Deadwood. I didn't see Madame Verdi again until the evening of my return. I was in my hotel room sorting some notes. Yes, of course. Won't you sit down? I was afraid you might have left for good. No, I went up into the hills. There's been a new strike. I heard about it. Why didn't you come back that night? I saw you go out with Boone May. I was tired. Oh. He talked to me, you know. Did he? he wanted to make a deal. Seems that certain information in Deadwood is worth a lot of money to both sides. The gold shipments? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what a man gives away when he's drunk. Well, have you made any deals on either side? Not yet. I wanted to talk to you first. Why? Because you're the only man I've wanted to talk to since my husband died. Money means a great deal to you, doesn't it? Yes. I've never considered living without it. Or with less of it? You sound like a preacher, Mr. Kendall. <laughs> Do I? What difference does it make whether I deal with McLaughlin or Boone May or both? The road agent, Archie McLaughlin? Yes. He's offered me quite a lot. Mm, it's a little dangerous, isn't it? Telling me, I mean. No, I trust you. You'd tell McLaughlin when a gold shipment's leaving Deadwood. And you tell Boone May that McLaughlin's going to hold up the stage. I have a feeling that one or the other is going to resent it. 
You have a very funny way of putting things, Mr. Kendall. Why don't you tell me your first name? It's Jeremy. Jeremy Bryan. They're nice names. But you make them sound so very correct. Just as you are, Mr. Kendall. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I asked you to come with me, join my establishment, what would you say? I'm not a particularly good gambler. I could teach you. If I were to ask you to leave your establishment, come with me, what would you say? <laughs> You're a most impractical man. I should be quite happy with you for about a month. Then I'd leave you because we'd be much too poor. I was kicked out of the army because I was impractical. In a way, it was a very good thing. Why? Because I refused to testify in a court-martial proceeding against an officer I barely knew. Well, they were stupid. Not at all. The man was innocent. In Cheyenne, you said there was a woman in England. There was. Uh, she was part of it all. <sighs> You're much too principled for me. <laughs> I don't think so. <sighs> Why did you kiss me? I wanted to see if you'd stop smiling. I'm not smiling. The fastest runner in town can't hope to keep up with the Mitch Miller Show... Because every Sunday night, when it comes your way on most of these same stations, the Mitch Miller Show covers that part of the entertainment world that stretches from the bright lights of Broadway to the Klieg lights of Hollywood. For another all-out, all-star variety edition of the Mitch Miller Show, join us right here at the Star's Address when Mitch Miller puts out the welcome mat again. <laughs> After I took her back to the gambling tent in the Badlands, I went to have dinner. What I didn't know then was that at about the same time, two men were riding up to an abandoned shanty in the timber near Deadwood. One of the riders was Billy Mansfield, the other Alexander Caswell. Both were heavily armed. They went into the shanty. A third man was inside waiting for them. He was Archie McLaughlin. How come you're late? We didn't get your message till a short while back. Where's the others? Johnny, Jack Smith. They'll be here, Billy. We making a raid? Yeah. There's a stage to Rapid City tomorrow. She's carrying a box of gold. How much? I don't know, but it'll be worth it. <laughs> that calico queen of yours, she sure the... <laughs> hey. You shut your mouth, Caswell. She ain't no calico queen. Madam Verdi's a lady, and don't you forget it. Sure, I didn't mean nothing. You didn't mean nothing, Arch. It don't matter. Besides, I didn't get this from her. Johnny Brown heard a shotgun rider talking about it down at Maggie's saloon. Where are we going to take it, Arch? Well, I figure we'll take the coach and whoop up Canyon between here and Rapid City. Well, I know where that is. That's a fine place for it, Arch. We can ride right down before they know what's happening. No sense going back to Deadwood now. Better if nobody sees us till after the job's done. We'll hole up here tonight. <laughs> Nice to see you back, Kendall. Make yourself comfortable. Say, I uh, hope you didn't mind me interrupting your dinner. I'll mind less when you tell me why you did. I uh, hear you've been up in the hills. Look here, May. I got a message to come to your office. You said it was important. Let's get to the point. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> Have you seen Madame Verdi tonight? Is that why you asked me to come here? No. no. Of course, I know you've seen her. Uh, she was up to your hotel. You seem to know everything that happens in Deadwood. That's my business. Well? she tell you about our deal? She mentioned it. she tell you about McLaughlin? No. Uh, no. I guess she wouldn't. Uh, since you've been gone, them two is quite a something in Deadwood. What do you mean? Well, I guess you ain't here. That night she opened uh, right after you left. Archie McLaughlin got to playing 21 with her. 
I guess he wasn't up to keeping his mind on the cards because he lost his last dollar. Uh, he's a good-looking young cuss, and I seen her give him a little extra smile. It was kind of late. She offered to stake him to breakfast. I'm not particularly interested in all this. I reckon you will be. Now, Archie thanks her real polite and says he's about due for a turn of luck, and when it comes his way, he'll come back and buy her breakfast. A few days later, he does come back, and he's got his pockets full of gold. They went out for breakfast. Been going out ever since. Go on. Now, Madam Verde, she knows for sure who he is and what he is. Ain't no mistake about that. I'm figuring she didn't take my advice about making deals with those boys, Savvy. Especially McLaughlin. Well, what's all this got to do with me? You didn't know about them. No. Listen, Kendall. I'm a peace officer. It's same as any other job, except more so, maybe. I got to know what goes on, Savvy. Well, she's told me a stage is going to be robbed tomorrow night somewhere twixt here and Rapid City. She say anything about that to you? No, 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 no. Why should she? I don't know. Is that all? <clears throat> I reckon you know now she's uh, sweet on McLaughlin, don't you? <laughs> Good night, Mr. May. She says she don't know uh, who's going to do the holdup. And now, if she's double-crossing me, you tell her. Bell, over here. Hello. Bell, I've just seen Boone May. And he suggests that you don't double-cross him. I think she's talking about McLaughlin. He told you? About Archie? About me? Yes. I suppose I should apologize to you. No, no, there's no need to. But if you really care about him, I think you'd better start playing straight with Boon May. What do you mean? The holdup you told him about. He suspects something. What? I don't know. Perhaps that you and McLaughlin are working together. <laughs> no, that's not so. I don't know who's doing the holdup, but it isn't Arch. You would have told me. <laughs> Honor among thieves. You know, if Mr. May knew what you were doing... He'd probably have me hanged. Why'd you come here to warn me? Why shouldn't I? I'll be writing about you. Oh. Well, there's one thing I'd like to know. Are you very much in love with McLaughlin? I don't know. Perhaps in a way that doesn't mean anything to you. I can't explain. Just be careful. I have to get back to my table now. There's money waiting to be won. The following night, I accompanied Boone May on the stagecoach carrying $20,000 in gold bound for Rapid City. With us were five special deputies. What happened when we were stopped by McLaughlin and his men, I shall report in my next dispatch to the London Times. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Gene Lansworth, Jack Crucian, Vic Perrin, Harry Bartell, and Jack Moyles. Join us again next week for another report from the Frontier Gentlemen. Bud Sewell speaking.